You know, I always get this question of, uh, you know, what do you consider the best film ever made? And um, I used to struggle with this question for the longest time, but then I eventually came to the conclusion that, no, um, I think my favorite film ever made is, is Jacques Tati's Playtime, uh, both because I, I relate to that film both on like a personal level, and, uh, and I also feel that it's the best example of making the best use of film. I don't think that Tati wastes a frame here. Um, and that's mostly because uh, he couldn't afford to, because he spent a lot of money uh, making these elaborate sets of what he called like Tativille, um, which is basically kind of like his version of Paris. So um, it, it's it's another film that uh, that stars his character of Mr. Hugh Lodge, who's kind of like this this silent movie um, comedian type character, where you know he kind of like toddles around in his in his trench coat and his and his hat and his pipe in his mouth, and he's kind of have, has this this charming curiosity to him. And he, he gets into some slapstick antics now and then. Um, here he's uh, exploring Paris um, with a whole bunch of other uh, tourists and a, a few other characters that we follow. Um, but the, the story isn't so much about him as much as it's about just just kind of Paris in general. Um, because we kind of start with a few different characters and then we follow Hulot for a while. Um, we follow him out of the airport. And then we, we follow some tourists, and we follow some other characters, and then, then we catch up with you lot, and then we, we lose him again, and then we uh, find, follow some other characters, and then eventually it all comes together when all these characters and their stories kind of intersect at this uh, this little nightclub that's, um, that's not quite ready for the night. <laughs> Um, this film is definitely, it's by far Tati's masterpiece. He spent tons of money to make uh, this version of Paris look like, you know, it was kind of like fantasy version of Paris that he wanted. Um, it's been dubbed like Tativille. It cost so much money to make this that he, he had to borrow tons of money and he would end up being in, in debt for years after this film. Um, but I honestly, I, I think it was worth it because I think this is by far his, his masterpiece. It's gorgeous to just look at all these different sets with their elaborate construction. Um, and and also the fact that these sets allow for this kind of like free uh, this kind of like free flowing uh, atmosphere where we can follow a whole bunch of different characters. Like you'll notice in a lot of uh, the wide shots, like there's there's tons of wide shots. Tati doesn't really like using close ups here, um, and that's because he wants to showcase uh, you know the locations. He wants to show off the sets, like all these. Uh, all these different sets and he wants to let these characters mingle about in them where you know it becomes more about the setting than it does the characters here um, which is which is kind of cool because your eye can kind of wander around like when we get to the airport you'll notice you know there's people having a conversation there's people walking in the background uh, there's people doing cleaning there's there's someone at the desk who's who's stating something over the intercom that we can't quite hear and then you see tourists coming off um, and and every pretty much every scene plays out like that where there's so much going on there's so much to look at um, that at times you, you might be overwhelmed, but I just, I, I love the fact that it showcases that this is like a Paris that's living and breathing, that there's always something happening, that there's always something going on. Uh, I relate to Mr. Hulot the most, um, because he, he, he's kind of, he kind of feels like a fish out of water here, he's just kind of like wandering around, uh, around this, the city he's never been to before, and just kind of, kind of fascinated by it, you know, he ends up in this one office building where he's kind of fascinated by the furniture, uh, he ends up accidentally going upstairs and kind of wanders around this kind of cubicle farm, uh, before cubicle farms are actually a thing here, um, and, and he just kind of goes from there. Uh, now I, I kind of now I relate to Mr. Hewlett because I saw this film when I was in uh, when I was in college and I, I felt very alone in the city. Um, but Playtime uh, w was a great example of, of showing off how you know you're not quite alone in the city. You know, you, you there's there's stuff to do here. Like the city's alive. It's you know there's there's stuff to do. There's there's tons of fascinating stuff to look at here. Um, probably one of the most fascinating sequences to me um, in this angle. Is that uh, is there's a scene where Mr. Hewlett goes into someone's uh, apartment building, and he ends up following them into uh, into their living room, and they, he he talks with this guy for a bit. Except we don't follow him inside the apartment building. We're watching from outside on the street. We we can't hear anything they're saying. We can only hear the traffic on the side of the street here. But we're just kind of watching from the window, almost kind of like a voyeur. Um, and then the camera will kind of like push over to the side and then we'll see, oh, well, th there's, there's, uh, there's another open window here and there's, there's a couple in here doing something. And wh what are they doing? What, what's happening here? And then you'll see the camera kind of tilt up and then we'll see there, there's another window above them. And there, there's, a, there's another group of people who are doing something differently there. And your, your, mind, your, your eyes kind of wander and you're like, oh man, what's, what's happening here? What's happening there? This film is just, it's, it's just such a joy to watch and just to follow it. Everything from like the character interactions to the... Um, to the decadent sets here, to the to the chaos that unfolds inside the club, where all the all the characters kind of converge here. 
Um, I, I just, I, I just love, it's got this, this, this very fun and kind of, kind of explorative nature to it. Just this, this beautiful curiosity of it, uh, that I just, I, I love it so much. That it's fun to just, like, just flip on and just, um, and just kind of, like, peer in the background or see what's, what's going on here. Or kind of get interested in the, in the foreground and then, then maybe shift to the background. Maybe look at what's happening over here. Um, and it's just, it's such a great use of, uh, of all these great sets and everything. It's just, it's, it's immaculate to look at. And, and it has, like, this very, like, kind of, like, subtle commentary on how, uh, you know, like, the, the new wave of technology seems just a little bit absurd, but it's, it's not, like, it's not blunt, it's not over the head. It's just kind of find some, some funny stuff to do with it here and there. And, uh, I, I just, I, I could relate to it so well as someone who felt alone in the city. And then here's this... Here's this film where you can show off that, you know, like a city is, is always moving, always bustling, and always something fun and fascinating to find, even when you're even when you're a little bit lonely. Um, and for that reason, I think that Jacques Tati's Playtime is definitely one of his best films, and easily one of the best films ever made. <laughs> 